Did you know that Total Rose and Power BI desktop are not what they seem? In fact, they are very different. They are not simply the sum of all the rows in a column like you might expect in Excel. In this video, we're going to take a look at those Total Rows and we're going to show you exactly how to handle them when they're not behaving the way you might expect. Welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and let's get started. For this example, what I've done is I've thrown together some very, very basic data. I work with customers on a very regular basis, helping them solve problems through our virtual mentoring program where they could jump on a call and I help them out. And I do this on a daily basis. Any day I'm not teaching, I'm helping customers. So I see these problems and I see them a lot and I see them in some very complicated models. But sometimes when we wanna learn something, the best way to learn it is on just a very simple, set of data so that we can understand the concept. So what you have here is I'll show you my model. In my model, I have on the model view a dimension table and I have two fact tables. One is going to record the revenue for a project. One is going to record the cost for a project. And then of course my dimension table here projects is going to have the information about the project. If we go over here, you'll see this is my project table. This is my project revenue table. We have one entry for any revenue for that project and the date of associated with it. And then of course I have my project cost and I've created a couple of measures. These are very basic measures. The first measures you ever build when you're kind of working inside of Power BI. And the measures that I've built here are just a sum of the column. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I always explain this type of measure as this is the sum of revenue within the filter context. And what that means is that it's going to respect the filters that are applied, which is why right here on this row, it's 300, it's 600, it's 200. And we see that right now, the total row is in fact behaving the way we would expect. It's 1100, which is the sum of all the revenue within the filter context. And then for our project cost, we have $65. Now let's just imagine for a quick moment that we have a scenario that requires us to maybe add some conditional logic. For example, we don't want to count the revenue of a project that has not yet incurred any cost. Now again, don't get stuck on the scenario. This is a very basic scenario, but let's see what happens when we modify the measure so that it handles that scenario, right? So for example, I'm gonna build a new measure. In fact, let me do this. I'm going to copy this visual. I'll move the copy over here. I'm going to remove project revenue and we are going to very quickly build a new measure. And so what I'm gonna do in this measure is I'm gonna call this one project revenue adjusted. And then all I wanna do is add in a basic if condition, right? So if, and my condition here is gonna be if the project cost equals zero, meaning that there is no project cost, then I want to also return zero for my revenue. However, if there has been some level of project cost, let's just return the project revenue. So this is going to work at the row by row level, but we're going to see an oddity when we get to our total row. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. I'll go ahead and format it real quick so we don't forget that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that into my visual right here. And we'll pull that over. All right, so if you look at the results here, we see immediately that there's a little bit of a difference between the two. The second visualization for project H110 has a cost of zero or blank. And so therefore we are adjusting the revenue for that project and that project only to not reflect any revenue, not yet. Again, don't worry about that scenario. So when you look at the total row, the total row isn't doing exactly what I might expect it to do, right? The total row still shows $1,100 in revenue, but I don't want that. I want it to show $900 in revenue, right? And the reason I wanted to show 900 is because we're not counting the revenue for H110. This is where a lot of people that are new to Power BI, new to DAX, or maybe been working with it for a year or two, but haven't really gotten the grasp of filter context, don't understand why this is happening. So I'm going to explain why it's happening. Then I'm going to show you uh, a pretty standard standard way that I've used for many years on how I would solve this particular issue. And it's going to be diving into some intermediate and advanced DAX concepts, but it's that's why we built a basic example so we can see it and understand it. So if I open back up my project revenue adjusted measure, let's click away and click back on it. This expression right here is going to be evaluated at the total row. 
All right, you follow me? At the total row, it's going to be evaluated. So in Power BI, it does not just sum up the rows in the column, as we mentioned earlier. In fact, it's going to do this calculation. So at the total row, what is the sum of project cost within the filter context? Well, at the total row, we have all projects. So the sum of project cost is the sum of all those, the cost for all those projects, which is $65. So $65 does not evaluate to zero. Therefore, we will not get a result of zero, which is not what we expected anyway. Instead, what we get is the sum of revenue for all projects that are in the filter context at the total row, which is all the projects in our model, because we have no filters in place, which is in fact $1,100. That is correct. Now, what we ask ourselves is, well, I don't want it to actually show the project revenue at the total row. I want it to show the 300, the 600, and the zero. I want you to add those three together. So how do we get that result? Well, that's a little tricky because what I really need to do is I want to build a virtual table. Okay, so I told you this was going to get a little tricky, right? Number one, I want to determine if I'm at the total row. If I'm at the total row, then I want to perform a different calculation at the total row than the calculation that I'm performing right here. So we're gonna actually build another measure and I'm gonna walk you through the steps. And we'll go through this briefly. The great thing about YouTube is you can rewind it and watch it again and watch it again and slow it down as much as you want. So I'm gonna build a new measure. And in this measure, we're going to call this one project revenue. And this time I'm gonna call it with total like that, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna determine if we're at the total row. And so one way I can determine if I'm at the total row is I can check if the project has one value. So what do I mean by that? Well, look at this right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this and then we'll build our way up. So does the project have one value? Meaning that J546, is that one single value? Yes, it is. J445, is that one single value at this row? Yes, it is. At this row, it is one single value. However, if I'm at the total row, it would be false, right? So let's take a look at this measure real quick. We'll just do this. I'm gonna grab that new measure that we just created and drop it right here on the outside. And that's not the right one. So we're gonna grab that one. And notice how it says, for this row, yes, it's a single value. This row, yes, single value. This row, yes, single value. This row, no, it is false, which means I'm at the total row. Now it's not a guaranteed I'm at the total row, but this is one of the workarounds we've used for years to figure out if I'm at the total row or if I'm at like a hierarchy, like a higher level within the hierarchy. So it's false. So, okay, we can work with that. So watch what we do. So now that we have that, we can come over here and I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, if it has one value, then what do we wanna do? Well, if it has one value, I just wanna do the regular calculation that we did before, project revenue adjusted. So I'm gonna do that, right? And then if I hit enter for the false condition, it's actually gonna just return blank for now. So you'll see, we scroll over a little bit. At the individual row, we're getting the project revenue adjusted. At the total row, we're getting blank because we haven't specified what to do in a false condition. Okay, so let's go back to our expression. If I want, I could do, okay, if, right, if it's not equal to one value, if we're at the total row, then we're gonna do something else. So for now, just so we can see it, I'm gonna put in 999, hit enter, and there you go. So that's how I know I'm at the total row. Okay, so we know this is working. We know we're at the total row. We validated, verified that. So what are we going to do next? Well, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to build out a little bit of a more complex scenario here so that we can kind of figure this out, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by building out that virtual table that we talked about before. I'm gonna do summarize. And the table that I'm going to summarize up is gonna be my dim project table. And I am going to return a list of every project that's in that table within the current filter context, right? So. What this will do is if you were at project J445, it's only gonna return project J445 because the DIM project table is filtered. But if you're at the total row, it's actually gonna return all three projects. So I can't just do this. If I do this right now, we will get an error message, right? Because you can't return multiple values where a single value is expected. And the reason this is happening is because at the total row, it would be returning all of the projects. It can't do that. That's not a single, that's a table. We can't return a table in a, in a cell, right? Where a scalar value is expected. But what we can do is I can do this. I can do a real quick test. I'm gonna do two tests. If you've seen my video before on debugging in Power BI, this is one of my favorite little tips right here. One of my favorite little tips. Let me do this. So I'm gonna do count rows. And if you think about it at the total row, how many projects are there? There's three. So if I count the rows in this virtual table, you're going to see that we get the value of three at the total row right there. In fact, let's just pull this down so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so we're counting the rows. That way we know we have the projects. In fact, let's do this. 
concatenate X. This is another one of my favorite tricks right here. So for those of you that have watched my videos for a long time, you've already seen these tricks before. So this is probably a little bit of a refresher for you. And I'm gonna say, all right, what I wanna do is go down that virtual table, grab the project name, concatenate it with a comma, grab the next project name, concatenate it with a comma. And I'm doing that so I can simply see in the total row, what are all the projects, verify and validate that this is doing exactly what I want it to do. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna do that. Let's add in a little bit of a delimiter here and then we'll close that up and that looks good. Okay. So watch what happens at the total row. At the total row, we now see a list of every project. That's beautiful. That's what the summarize gives us. So what we want to do now is we have summarize and we have the result of summarize, which is a virtual table that has all three of those projects and they're all on their own row. So on each one of those rows, I want to go to the first project and I want to perform the project revenue adjusted calculation on that row, which was our if condition. Then I want to go to the next row and do the same thing. And I want to go to the next row and I want to do the same thing. Once I'm done, Done with that, then I want to sum up those results, which will be 300 plus 600 plus zero, which is 900. That's what we want to return at the total row, right? So effectively, what I want to do is I want to I want to sum up this column. But since I can't just straight up sum up that column, right? We've talked about that. Since I can't just straight up sum up that column, what I could do is build a virtual table that looks like this and then sum up the column in that virtual table. So that's what we're going to do. So the way I do that is I'm gonna use another X function. And again, if you follow me for any length of time, you know that X functions are my favorite and we're going to do a sum X. Now, what the X function does is I always look at X functions as two separate distinct operations. The X portion of the X function is going to go over this virtual table and for every row in that table, it's going to perform an expression. So I want it to, for every row in that table, I want it to perform the project revenue adjusted calculation. When the X function is done, it's gonna return a one column table that has that expression for every row. So it will exactly look like this, 300, 600, and zero. So now we have a one column table. So once we're done with the first part of that X function, the second part of that X function is the aggregation. And in this situation, it's gonna be the sum. So now I'm gonna tell it, take that one column table and sum it up. Now, if you wanna test this out, play around with this a little bit and try min, try max, try average and see what they do. And you're going to see that it gives you exactly what you would expect if you understand the concept that we just went through. So I'm gonna simply do a sum X. I'm gonna close the parenthesis on the sum X. The last parenthesis goes to our if statement. Now we're going to hit enter and we get 900. And that is in fact exactly what we wanted to return. So now I've tricked Power BI Desktop to a little bit of DAX magic to get the total row result that I want. And this is in fact a very common problem that I see on message boards. I get emails about this and I also get virtual mentoring requests about this all the time. If you're interested, if you've been struggling with Power BI and you have a model and you're trying to solve problems with that model or Power Apps or Azure or what have you, go to pragmaticworks.com and check out our virtual mentoring program because I would love to jump on a call and help you out with that. This is a service that we offer our customers and they find it very, very valuable. If you want a copy of this Power BI report, make sure to check the description below so that you can download this Power BI report and you can work with it yourself and you can test out the things that you saw in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any specific DAX questions or problems that you would love to see us do a YouTube video about, please put those in the comments for us. I'm always looking for new ideas and you know, you could help our team be inspired by different DAX YouTube videos that we can do. Thank you again for watching this video. My name is Mitchell Pearson. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.